Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning and greetings from the Brogat School. Today, we have the honor of having a renowned creative director, Dom Megna, with us. Uh, he's a self-confessed ad nerd and he has over 24 years of experience in advertising. Having worked with some of the most uh, prominent ad agencies like Gray, CHE Proximity, he is currently the executive creative director at Spinach Australia. Uh, please note that we will be having a short Q&A session at the end. So please do keep your questions ready. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you very much. And hello to you all. Uh, it is a real honor to uh, basically be part of this. I think this is a fabulous idea. And, uh, you know, I had four years of full-time training in advertising uh, and then I went and did an MBA and all that stuff. It, it, was it necessary to become an advertising creative? Highly arguable. I think what you're doing now and the caliber of people that you're talking to is something that hopefully none of you are taking for granted because you've got people like Vicky Ross and hopefully you're in the session with her yesterday. Um, I'm a massive fanboy of hers and I'm probably going to talk to AD about how I get hold of her uh, lecture because uh, that is world-class stuff that you're experiencing there. So it is an honor and I think it's a fabulous idea. So welcome one and all. Um, yeah, and thank you for the introduction. Um, I've been writing headlines since... Uh, almost 25 years now and so I understand the importance of them and I'm going to take you through headlines it's called headlines and deadlines we're really not going to cover deadlines too much I think you're all kind of grown-ups and know how to manage your own time um, but you know time management is probably an entirely separate module that we would want to talk about one day once you start getting swamped with work as, as junior and midway creatives um, but we are going to cover headlines and then at the end we're going to cover taglines, slogans that uh, companies and we're going to be some ex we're going to have some exercises along the way as well because I think it's really a good writing like anything else is like a muscle you need to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and so you need to think on the run and you need to think under pressure and so uh, all those things are really important and I'm going to put you under pressure a few times over the course of this module. So let's get into it. I've called this writing how to write headlines AI couldn't. And I think there was probably for a moment there last year, probably around this time last year, where every copywriter was fearing for their job uh, because of chat GPT and BARD and all these other tools and elements that were coming in to basically steal our jobs. Uh, and very quickly, it was determined that the quality of this writing was fairly mediocre because it doesn't take into account human insight and emotion and intelligence and feelings and doesn't do anything that's out of the ordinary or out of the box, doesn't do anything that breaks the rules. It works within a very limited confine. And that's no way to really write. And that's no way to write headlines. That's no way to write taglines. Um, not ones that work, not ones that are interesting and engaging and going to sell things for your clients. So we're going to go through some rules. We're going to go through some techniques. And I'm going to show you lots of examples of what I mean along the way. Uh, and hopefully you get something out of this. Now, I will make a copy of this uh, to share uh, at the end. Um, I will do a reduced PDF version and I'll send that through AD as well. Okay, so the, probably the first thing we wanted to talk about is in writing headlines, they aren't just great sentences and clever uses of words. They're great ideas expressed in words. And a guy called Dan Nelkin uh, basically gave us this little piece of wisdom. And I'll reference him a few times because some of the techniques throughout this, uh, this module uh, have been taken from Dan's book, which we'll discuss at the end of this module. Um, but it is a fantastic way to look at it when you're thinking about headlines. Um, headlines are ideas and every idea that you write has to have a freshness and an originality to it to stop someone in its tracks and to be a little bit engaging. So if you think about headlines as a great ideas expressed in words and try to be as, as few words as possible, even better, but a really great way to start looking at what headlines are. When it comes down to it, at the end of the day, a headline is the face of your ad. It's your first impression. So if you want to be, if you want people to be interested, make it interesting. You, know, you walk into a room and somebody doesn't make a good first impression on you, and they're, they're, they're a total stranger, then you're not really going to be paying too much attention to them in life. It's exactly the same with ads, and the headline is your first impression. Its main role is to capture attention, and if it's really good, generate interest. But 
if you've captured attention, most of the time that's a job done. And there is a difference between, you know, and you probably cover this off, between brand advertising and performance advertising and direct advertising and stuff that needs to work really quickly and stuff that builds brand awareness over time. If you don't capture attention, it doesn't really matter what the purpose of your ad is. It's moot. If it doesn't capture attention, it's useless. And it doesn't really matter what your ad is. Each of them has a headline. And if you think about it that way, it isn't just a print ad. Um, it's an email. And your headline is your subject line, which is the most powerful line in your email. Because if you don't resonate with someone with the subject line, then they're not going to open your email. So if you think about it that way, don't just write a subject line because it's a little piece of content fodder that you just have to get out the door. Treat your subject line like a headline and you're going to write better emails. And as a junior copywriter, as a midway copywriter, you're going to be writing a lot of this stuff. You don't go straight into the, you know, the, the, the big, fantastic, brilliant opportunity advertising chance to create iconic ads. You're going to write a few emails. And you've got to write a few brochures and you're going to write a few kind of fairly basic newsletter style ads. And if you come at it with the opinion of, okay, this is an email, but I want to make sure that it's the best email it can be. Clients care about winning their category. And if it's going to be an email, it needs to be the best in category email. And it starts with the subject line. And if you treat it like a headline, uh, then you're going to do very well. It's the same with a banner ad the same with uh, radio. The radio, probably your headline is the first sort of five seconds of your radio spot. So if you think about it like that, your headline is the first impression that every ad gives. So I'm not going to draw too much distinction between different media um, because at the end of the day, the, 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 the tenets, the rules, the techniques for writing great headlines don't really change. But before we get into it, some important stuff and it's, it's really important that we remember this because it's very easy when you're writing headlines to go off on tangents um, and suddenly you're off brief or you're off brand. So every headline you'll ever write will be on a brief for a brand that is done as, as a tone of voice and a history. It will likely be part of a wider campaign. So it's your job to respect this and remain consistent with all of the above while finding new angles and ideas within those headlines that stay true to what that brand is, to stay true to that brand's voice. And if you were with Vicky yesterday, she would have spoken about consistency and consistency ruthlessly. So you need to basically respect that. But within that, you've got room to play. And so we're finding new angles and ideas to keep your communications engaging and interesting is fantastic. That's the purpose of you as a copywriter but you need to respect the brand that you're writing for. And I wanted to state that very clearly up front. And of course, you've got to stick to the brief. One of the great temptations as a creative, not just a copywriter, is to stray a little bit from the brief when you have a really great idea. And it happens time and time again, and I've seen it time and time again, and I'm still guilty of it. You have a great idea and you end up trying to back massage it into the brief and say, well, it kind of answers this part of the brief, but not necessarily that part of the brief, but it goes out on a limb. And sometimes that works. If the idea is brilliant and it's going to be engaging and interesting, that's great. But sticking to the brief is your number one job. So I'm going to start setting the scene with you with some examples. And this is three different ways to approach the same brief. So this one is where a coffee chain that sells iced coffee for $3. So we just need to tell people that it's really, really good iced coffee. But for $3, it's actually crazy good when it comes to value. So it's a bit of a double bunger brief, which you'll get a lot of, which is we really, our single-minded proposition is X, but we want to, weave in a little bit of why. Now, it happens all the time. So what we're doing here is going great quality, great price. And that's a, an age-old brief that you will see time and time again. So here's some different examples of how to approach it. But each idea should generally be grounded in a relatable insight, the way people consume coffee, a human truth, the way people drink, taste coffee, Great taste, great flavour is obviously a human truth. Coffee that you want to come back for. 
uh, is a human truth, copy that wakes you up, copy that perks you up, human truth, or a product insight. It could be freshly ground beans from Guatemala. Whatever it is, it has to have something, a little piece of information and a nugget in there that the consumer can identify with. So here are some examples. Weigh in number one. Let's really go up on the premium quality and make it sound fancy. But do it in a way that average everyday people would talk about. And if you do that in an every, average everyday way, then suddenly you, you're introducing a bit of a value message. La tady da, only $3. So using a pun for the la da which is the way, certainly in Australia, the way everyday people talk about fancy, posh people, oh, la di da the la te di da only $3. So you're saying within, what, five words, good, cheap. Really simple way of doing it. A second way into this brief would be let's talk up the value. Cost of living is biting, and it's almost impossible to get anything decent for $3. Human truth. Absolute insight in the way we're living right now. So a headline that would represent that way in. The hardest working $3 in town. Now you're looking at it and you go, well, we don't have necessarily have to say coffee because there's a big picture of the coffee there. So let's do a headline that talks about value. And because we're saying it's the hardest working $3 in town, that's a really good bang for your buck. That's a really good coffee for $3. We're creating a little bit of space in there to, for the viewer, for the consumer, to draw their own conclusions. People aren't dumb. If we start treating consumers like idiots, then we're going to write really boring advertising. A third way in for this brief for a headline is a great tasting coffee for this little money is a little financial win in your daily routine. Now, again, human insight and a product insight here, your daily routine, if you're a coffee drinker, involves coffee. And it would involve one in the morning and possibly one in the afternoon. And we all love a little win. Again, a human insight. Is, you know, little wins happen to us all the time. Those little moments of surprise and delight that cross our, cross our desks or our minds or our lives when we're out and about is a fantastic little, little celebration. So a way in for that. Tastes like when you get to the register and realise it's on sale. Now... I'm sure we've all been there where you go shopping and you've found something that you liked and you think it's a certain price and you get to the counter and it's cheaper. This tastes like that, that feeling. So we're using this headline to basically create a relatable little insight and we're likening it to our coffee. It's the little win. It could be tastes like when you get every green light on the way to work and so on and so on and so on. And that creates its own little campaign in and of itself. So I just wanted to highlight that coffee campaign to you to show you that there are different ways in to tackle every single brief. And if you're going to go out there and write two or three headlines and sort of job done, then you haven't interrogated the brief hard enough. You haven't looked at the human insights, the human truths, the product truths enough um, to actually really do it properly. And a lot of that comes down to your own emotional intelligence and your own lived experiences, your own understanding of the language, uh, the nuance within the language, the cultures and subcultures about the markets that you're writing for. It requires you to be a little bit of a sponge. It also use all your own lived and shared experiences. So some rules around writing headlines, and there are heaps. There's probably endless rules. I mean, you could write them forever. But here are a few I've gleaned over the years. Um, but to be really, really thorough, I highly suggest you read up. I mean, this is going to be, what, a 90-minute, maybe two-hour uh, session that you're doing with me. A lot of this stuff will go in one ear and out the other. But if you read, start reading, reading and consuming more and more information, a book like this one, which is Dan Nelkin's book, um, you're going to get some really fantastic wisdom that you can use time and time again. But here are just a few rules. Rather than just be clever, be relevant, unique, and useful. A brilliant ad is the truth told well. I think that was Ogilvy that said that. It was one of, the, one of the great advertising people said brilliant advertising is the truth told well, and there's no truer statement. But it's really tempting as a copywriter just to try and be clever. It happens all the time. But you've got to be relevant, you've got to be unique, you've got to be useful. And I love this ad for Altoids. 
So obviously you can see what the brief was. We've got our toys and we've got the really, really strong mint. Here's our packaging, go away, write a, write a headline for it. And this one, they were, obviously they were arrived at it remarkably simply, and it does come in a metal box. So mint's so strong they come in a metal box. Simple. It's relevant to the product, it's unique, uh, and it's inc incredibly useful because it also says, look for the metal box when you go shopping. Um, really good example. Relevant, unique, useful. Another rule, avoid cliche or the obvious. How often do you see ads like this? Um, health, lifestyle, and fitness starts with you. Train with me. Especially online, digital media, digital display advertising, web banners, things like that. You see this sort of stuff all the time, and there's absolutely no excuse to do it. It's lazy, it's ineffective, and it's ineffectual work, and it's just not going to work. And so avoid that like the plague. Fairly obvious statement. Know your customer. Critical one. Um, I'm going to talk about The Economist a little bit more later, but uh, The Economist is a business publication that caters to uh, upper management, middle management that want to be upper management, upper management that want to be C-suite and C-suite business people. And they demonstrate through this campaign, and this campaign is legend. You'll be able to find it pretty easily. I'll share a link to a, a, some executions later. Absolutely demonstrates that it knows their customer. Lose the ability to slip out of meetings unnoticed. And they play with language in such a way that requires is that little bit of thought, that little bit of an aha moment. But the economist reader, and they know this, likes to think they're pretty smart because they are generally when it comes to business. Um, and reading this, they just a little nod goes on in their brain saying, okay, this makes sense. This is me. Yep, good, the economist. And if you want to be this person, you read this and go, I want to be that. I want to be that. So they know their customer probably better than almost anyone. Another way in is know your medium. Now, you're not always writing for individual spaces. It might be an unusual execution. If it's an email, as I said before, if it's just an email, put all that time into that subject line. Put all that time into the first paragraph of your emails before people drop off. But this is just a really fun example of uh, Quest Trade, which is it was an RRSP, which is like... Uh, retirement funds, like a superannuation kind of thing where you put it in and you take money out of retirement. But if you read the ad, if you read the copy itself, it's actually really boring. But it doesn't matter because the way it's been placed. So the bottom of the escalator starts at the left and as you rise up the escalator, you get up to the top and there's your ultimate message. There's branding on all of it so you know who it's from. Is this a brilliant ad? No. But it recognises that, okay, Quest Trade have bought five spaces that go up this escalator and let's at least write to that. So they've understood the medium and they've written to it accordingly. And write lots of them. Good, bad and indifferent. I'm sure that if you're taking some of these broke ad school classes, people are going to tell you just, just write, 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 and this is true. Uh, this is straight out of my own notebook. Um, and this was a uh, rent versus own. So either don't rent your own home, uh, don't rent a home, uh, buy one instead. And this is around people sharing the home costs, sharing the mortgage. So this could be two friends buying a house. And usually when you share a house with someone, you have to share a bathroom. These houses come with two bedrooms with their own ensuite bathrooms. And so we had this share mortgages, not bathrooms, share backyards, not bathrooms, share pizza, not en suites and things like that. So we started writing all these different headlines and just write, 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 write. Some of these worked, some of these didn't, and there was pages and pages and pages of this stuff. And it's like a muscle. As I said before, the more you write, the better you get at them. And just come at it from all sorts of different angles, all sorts of different insights, all sorts of different ideas. You know, we had the insight around this one. I think we ended up with share the mortgage, not the bathroom, as the tagline for the campaign. But the biggest reason people didn't go into share ownership with people uh, was because of the, all of the compromises they had to make within that house. Uh, and with this house design, you didn't have to do that. So that was very much at the core of what this brief was. But my point is 
you know, I must have written 150 headlines to reach these, the ones that ended up running. And try to keep them short, not absolute golden rule, but if it's something like outdoor, then do it. Um, this is a, a brilliant campaign. You're probably aware of it from Uncommon in the UK. I would suggest you look at an agency like Uncommon and look at the work that they've done because they're quite brilliant, one of the best agencies in the world right now, in my opinion. Um, and three words. And in just in those three words, they can it's a little wink, a little knowing nod to you to say, we know why you really travel and we're here for you and we're all for it. Yeah, it's business, leisure. Well, that's how everyone else deals with it. We know you're off for mischief, so let's go. Just a little feel-good moment around the brand. So you try and keep them short. Some of the ones I'm going to show you soon are a little bit longer, but we'll talk about why. And sometimes you just need to kind of get out of the way a little bit. And it's not, Every ad isn't necessarily about writing a fantastically clever, relevant, unique, useful headline. Uh, often it needs to work in conjunction with visual art direction and design. And to me, this is a really iconic old print ad for Range Rover, um, and you can see why it's good. Um, and the, head, the, the, the visual does all the heavy lifting, but the headline really just nails it. And then the copy goes into a lot more detail. So you can read that copy as we move forward. We're not really going to deal too much with body copy today. But, yeah, sometimes you need to get out of the way. It's not always just a headline-driven ad or campaign or whatever that you're going to run with. So be mindful. And one more. This is basically the golden copywriter's rule of thumb. If you've got a straight visual, you use a twisted headline. If you've got a twisted visual, use a straight headline. So on the left, straight visual, kid on a beach. Um, twisted headline for Mount Sinai Hospital, who basically restored a two-year-old's hearing. We turned a child who couldn't hear into a typical two-year-old who doesn't listen. Like, fantastically relevant, interesting. I really need to read the copy to find out more about this hospital. Um, just a really charming ad. And on the right, we've got the twisted visual. Um, which is the baseball with the little surgery scar, which looks like the stitching on the baseball, minimally invasive sports surgery. Again, look at that visual. Okay, that visual does a lot of storytelling in and of itself. We're just going to use the headline to really just nail that idea to the ground. Really, really important. Now, you're going to get blocked. Happens to me all the time. Um, so occasionally it helps to start employing some techniques to get the, keep the words flowing. Uh, I mentioned that Dan Nelkin book before, it's full of techniques, but if you look up, and you need to be a little bit careful, if you look up good copywriting techniques online, you're going to get a lot of rubbish. So rely on people like your broke ad school tutors and people like AD to help point you in the right direction of the people to listen to, the people who are giving really good advice. So one technique, take a well-known phrase or saying and twist it for the product or service that you're writing for. And again, The Economist, which has taken some common phrases and expressions and twisted them to fit their product. Instead of peer pressure, pressure peers. Don't make the same mistake twice. Don't make the same mistake once. Great minds think alike. Great minds like a think. So they're basically just taking a whole lot of expressions and how can we twist this in a way that actually ladders up to the big campaign thought of making our readers feel clever or feel like they could be clever if they read our publication. Taking expressions, twisting them up. Here's another one. You had me at hello. You lost me at hello. Breath speaks louder than words. Now, this is just, I don't think this ever ran. This is just uh, uh, a young copywriter, Solomon, who decided he was going to create a print ad once a day for a full year. And if you do that, you're going to end up with some, a lot of pretty good ads. And this is one of them. Just a really nice twist on a common phrase. 
Another technique, get completely, absolutely straight to the point. In a world where we're completely bombarded with ads and advertising all the time, um, sometimes getting completely, absolutely straight to the point is the way to go. Now, this was an outdoor piece that ran in Melbourne, Australia, where I am now. Um, and if you're driving past, you can't read that top line, but it does explain why they did what they did. We spent our whole Australian marketing budget on this billboard, so we'll just level with you. Please buy Yorkshire tea. Now, that received a lot of PR, and it was also in a really high traffic area. Um, and they had a good reason to do it because they decided as part of their marketing strategy they would go all in on one ad. So if they're going to do that, they have to be blunt. Uh, but it might be for a charity or an NGO that you're writing for and you need to shake people out of a little bit of indifference or a stupor. Um, so bluntness could work in such a situation like that. Um, but if you've got a bit of a writer's block, writing a few headlines that get absolutely completely straight to the point might help spark something else too. Another technique, this is another one of Dan's, list and twist, say the first part straight, then twist it to give it impact. So this just looks like a normal shopping list. I'll let you read it. Whoever you are, we got what you need, Tesco. So it's a grocery list of someone who's obviously up to no good um, and just letting you know, yeah, we've got everything. Now that simple, this could be a digital ad, this could be a mobile ad, could be a print ad, could be a video, really. Um, but just a compelling way in uh, that really kind of grabs your attention, the list and twist. And here's another one. Australia's best $30 black tea, only $15, the lowest prices every day. Now, this does the double meaning thing, which I talked about uh, earlier with uh, the coffee, you know, the, the good quality, good value price, saying that this is a classic black tea uh, and it's we, we think it's Australia's best $30 one, which says hot to quality, but we're only charging you $15. And then the, the tagline at the bottom every day clarifies that even further. So Australia's best $30 black tea list, twist, only $15. A really good way of doing that. I used to call it the boom boom, but it's a list and twist, whatever you want to call it, works a charm on a lot of things. So a really good technique to, to, to use when you're, when you're a little bit blocked. Puns. Now you're going to come, across, uh, come along uh, a lot of these over your career, and puns can be great. Uh, they can be overused, uh, and they can be quite lame too if they're, if they're really kind of a bit meh. But the guy called George Tannenbaum, who's uh, an American uh, creative director and writer who's been at it for, I don't know, 50 years or so, um, writes, and again, a really good person to follow on LinkedIn if you don't follow George already. Every day he puts up a, he writes for himself now and he writes as, a, as an individual freelancer for various companies. Um, and every day he puts up a different kind of headline-based um, post on LinkedIn. And this is one of his puns, which I think is just fantastic. And here are a couple of other good ones uh, you may have seen. So uh, KFC ran out of chicken, and I think it was in the UK. Yeah, it was in the UK where this happened. Um, so they had to write an apology ad, and they could have just said, we're sorry, up large. Um, but they decided to actually turn it into a bit of a brand piece at the same time. So they rearranged the KFC. Um, probably the best apology ad I've ever seen. Uh, it'd be very difficult to top it. And as a result, they've turned what could have been a bit of a disaster into a bit of a win for the brand. And Tesco is just a, a feel-good, make-you-smile pun. Um, go in all buns glazing instead of guns blazing. Go in confident. Go in happy. you got a good product. you got good cross, cross buns here. We're having a bit of fun with it at the same time. A really good pun. Uh, this is just a spec ad, um, probably works somewhere in the, in the well in the US where setting a new PB, personal best, is, you know, really good thing to do in whatever you're doing in life, but they call peanut butter PB. Um, so set a new PB, 
basically means set a new personal best. This is a high quality best peanut butter, um, but it's a cute pun. And you can do a PB and J peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Set a new PB and J. Says quality um, and does it in a really simple way. So puns used well uh, work well. Um, there's there's generally schools of thought that puns are a cheap way to do it, but um, a bit of a cop out maybe. But I think puns done well certainly should be part of your armory. They won't always get up uh, and they won't always be good, so don't put them up. Um, but trying to come up with some and trying to write some is another nice way to kind of help cure your writer's block. Another technique is the cliffhanger, where you come to the rescue. Here's a couple of examples here. So the one on the left uh, is from uh, McDonald's in Sweden. And if you read that, you're like, hang on, what? That's, that's not right. That's not good. And then the copy continues it. So we don't hire Turks, Greeks, Poles, Indians, Ethiopians, Vietnamese, Chinese or Peruvians. And then the copy continues, nor Swedes, South Koreans or Norwegians. We hire individuals. We don't care what your surname is because ambition and determination have nothing to do with your nationality. McDonald's is one of the most integrated companies in Sweden with as many as 95 nationalities work for us. Join us at in the web address. So you're kind of forced to read the copy. Um, and it's a recruitment ad, so they want you to read the copy and get into the weeds and get into the details because of the nature of the ad. Now, we sort of talked about understanding your medium and understanding your, your customer or, or your audience is probably a better word. Uh, this is understanding the purpose of your ad. And the purpose of our ad was to get people to the fine print to work out what to do. We don't hire up front. Um, alludes to the recruitment ad and then it really nails it at the end. And once you've read the copy, you think to yourself, you know what, McDonald's is the kind of place where I would like to work because right? they don't discriminate and they celebrate diversity. And on the right, uh, a very difficult category, um, slacktivism online is... A, it's 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 a, it's a real become a real tragedy for a lot of charities and NGOs. People just throwing something alike on socials is enough, and it's it's not, and it never will be. Um, so the headline grabs your attention, but then the copy really nails it. We have nothing against likes, but vaccines cost money. Please buy a polio vaccine at unicef.se. It will only cost you four euro, but it will save the lives of twelve children. No nonsense call to action, tells you what to do um, and resolves the cliffhanger nicely. Again, a really good way in. Uh, another technique, wordplay till you're exhausted. Just go, 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 go. I love this next ad. Straight headline, uh, sorry, straight visual, twisted headline. The nuts, nut, the nut, nuts, nut. It's just a really cute play on words. What KP wanted to say is, oh, we've got really good nuts. They're really good quality. Um, you know, people come back. We've got repeat customers. How do we roll all that up in one thing? And someone just said, we're the nut, nuts, nut. Like, ridiculously clever. And it probably was one of the first thoughts. Um, and that doesn't mean it's one of the worst thoughts, but I just really like it. I think it's cute. Uh, another technique, liken your product to something completely unrelated but still relatable. So unrelated to your product. This is a fantastic ad. Door handles are the handshake of the building. Make sure it's a good one. Now, somebody sat there and thought very deeply about door handles to create this ad. Like, what does a door handle mean to someone? It lets you in. It's... It's the portal. There's all sorts of different ways to liken a door handle. And someone thought, yeah, it's like the handshake of the building. It's like when you reach out and grab someone's hand, you get a feeling for that person. You get a connection to that person. It's exactly the same with the building. So we've likened the door handle to a handshake and we're going to turn that into a headline. So even the most boring product can be desirable with the right words. Now, I talked about a, a recruitment campaign for McDonald's earlier. Here's another one, and I'm happy to admit I did this one. But I, prior to my job at Spinach, I worked for a funeral company. 
which was um, a startup uh, called Bear Cremation. Um, and we were really struggling for people. And the brief was we need to get people who aren't necessarily funeral people and they don't have funeral experience. We just want people who are really, really good at their particular wheelhouse, at their particular job, and attract them to the funeral industry. So these are only five ads. There was probably about 10 all up that we did, and we just did them on LinkedIn um, and trying to attract people who were in different industries. And this was at the time where there was a real people shortage. This was sort of... Uh, was during COVID, probably just post-COVID, where there was lots of vacancies, lots of people changing jobs, and we were kind of really struggling. So we used copywriting as our advantage in this, and all of these ads got us a really great pool of people to choose from and hire. Um, and understanding their recruitment ads, um, and they're on LinkedIn, so it understood the kinds of people that we were talking to, and it understood that the medium that we were on. And if you scour LinkedIn for good recruitment ads, they're very few and far between. We are hiring a midway designer, like unicorn wanted or something like that, where we've kind of seen it all and we've heard it all before. Where this taps into individual insights around those particular people. So even the most boring ads for the most boring company in the most boring industry there's room for copywriting. And that's a really important point to note. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of exercises now. And so it could be going back and having a look at some of these techniques, um, having a think about writing an idea as opposed to a clever headline. Um, and I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. And look, if you don't crack it, if you don't feel like you've cracked it, it doesn't really matter. If you feel like you've got something that's half decent, email it to me if you've got if you just want a, a critique email it to me i will i will send after this session i'm going to pick out some of the good ones some of the ones i like and i'll reveal them in this session but if you email me your headlines i will send you a note post this session over the over the next week um, some notes around your headlines and a couple of tips and tricks um, that could help improve your headlines on this particular brief and there's a second one as well so i encourage you to stay in touch with that because um, i'm happy to kind of stay in touch with you beyond this session of course so the ad is for a mullinex blender the brief is it's the world's best blender that can blend anything so you know big job big statement so have a bit of a play with these with this and write some headlines have a bit of fun with it Enjoy it. I'll give you 10 minutes to write. Uh, so what is it now, 45? Whatever hour it is, wherever you are, 45. Um, so 10 minutes from now, and then I'll give you two minutes to email them in, um, and I'll keep my eye on the email here, and after that we'll share a couple. Has anyone got any questions before I hit start? Okay. Go for it, team. Good luck. A few minutes later. I've got a lot of emails here, and I, as I said to you before, I will respond to them all. It'll just be over the course of the week. So thank you. Just going through the last few emails now. We've got a lot of them that say we blend. Um, and we blend good, we blend well. Uh, probably not quite going far enough. Um, but like, just to say your product is good is, well, you're competing with all the other blenders who are all going to say effectively the same thing. So you really kind of, you need to try and set yourself apart a little bit. Uh, a couple that I want to read out. Uh, Manisha, uh, sticks, stones, and smoothies. I thought that was really quite nice. Um, it says we blend everything, and if we blend everything like sticks and stones and smoothies, then, you know, that's beyond awesome as a blender. 
Uh, the blend of the effing world instead of the end of the effing world. We talked about puns. Uh, someone put in blend it like Beckham before, which I thought was kind of quite cute as well. Put that in the chat. Um, that's not that's not bad. To make everything liquid, it's solid. Now, that's a really nice play on words, but I think at the end of the day, it just says we're a solid blender as opposed to an exceptional one. But thank you, Manisha. Uh, Suvik did one which was you could use it to mix cement, uh, but not recommended. I would suggest a headline like that, I think it's, which I think is good, to take out the but not recommended. Um, I just think you could use it to mix cement. To me, says this is all powerful, almighty blender. So I quite like that one. Uh, and Kit, Tom made a steel smoothie. We don't recommend tasting it. Having a bit of fun with it. I think that's kind of quite cute as well. Um, very nice. Uh, Rani can even blend your thoughts. <laughs> it's pretty pretty out there so thank you um look in the interest of keeping this going i'm not going to go through all of them but um some really interesting takes there yeah a lot of really interesting takes and thank you for sending you all your emails i'm going to show you an example of one that i think is actually quite good as well wordplay it literally says it's the best and can literally blend anything, including words. World, Mullenix best in blender the other. So just, it blends, so why don't we blend up the headline? People read it and still it still says the best blender in the world, but it's so powerful that it even blends headlines. So that was an interesting example. I thought of that one as well. So words are your plaything in this kind of instance. Have a bit of fun. We're going to have another exercise now. Um, we moved on. And now I want you to send me what you think is your best headline. Um, come up with a list. Play, play creative director of your own work and send me what you think is your best headline for this. And I'm going to give you a couple of vague directions to think about. So COP 2026, I think you, I'm not sure if you're aware, but COP 2024 was just on in was it Dubai, um, where all the world leaders come to discuss climate action and what they're going to do about it. Um, in 2026, it's going to be on in Sydney, in Australia, where I'm from. And so they will all be in cars. They'll all be arriving at the airport over this 48-hour period, and they're all going to be in vehicles travelling from the highway from Sydney Airport to the Sydney Central Business District. So what we're going to do, and we could be, it's like Greenpeace. We're going to write, well, they bought one large format billboard to appear on that highway. So our audience are world leaders and their entourages who are with them at the time. To appear on this highway, a billboard urging them to take real action at this particular event. So think about it. They're world leaders. They Even if they don't see Bill Billboard, one of their entourage will see it and they'll want to talk about it. So ways in. Climate action, every, let's think about the products here. Let's think about the insight. Climate action, countries have been dragging their feet. Um, and whether you personally believe in climate change or the, the, you know, the drastic climate change or not, I think we can all agree that 7 billion rapidly approaching 8 billion people on a planet with finite resources, it makes sense to look after the environment. Now, these world leaders are in a car. Uh, we need to shake them out of a stupor. We need to be able to think. So one is maybe we try a shock tactic. Maybe we try the cliffhanger kind of approach. <clears throat> and we try and shake them out of the indifference they may be feeling. Another way in might be these people have families and nations to look after who all have families and children of their own so you know what are they this particular cop in sydney is the chance for them to have real impact for generations moving forward so what's something that might appeal to their emotional side their conscience 
So I want you to think about them in those two areas. Okay, we want to do something that shocks, and we want to all we're going to look at areas that appeal to people's conscience. Have a look at those two kind of ways in. Um, and I'll give you another 10 minutes as of now. But as I said to you, um, pick your top one, two max that you think work and send them to me. Off you go. A few minutes later. All right, stop sending emails. You swamped at the last second. Good job, team. All right. Adrian, implement change before the climate changes everything. That's quite good. Um, I think the best headlines in this format are going to be quite short. I think for you know, large format outdoor billboards, not sure if you've covered this in any other modules yet, but you're probably looking at around 12 words, absolute max. Um, so the shorter ones are generally better. Simran was don't take the back seat again. I uh, thought that was quite good. Um, just bear with us. Akshay, the next time you might have to meet online. It's quite good. Uh, I, uh, Carla, I really like this. This meeting could have been a more eco-friendly email. Uh, very good. Tapping into existing wordplay that everyone can kind of agree on. Uh, that was a really nice way of doing it. Just bear with me. I'm just reading through some of these. Snehashish Dole in 2076 will be discussing climate action on Mars. Interesting, thought-provoking way in. All right. I will go through and respond to all of these individually uh, later on, but thank you for the submissions. I'm just going to show you a couple of ways in for this. Uh, this first one is shock. And if you're going to shock, you've got to go hard because shock is difficult. Now, this is reference, obviously, to Mother Earth. Now, that's shocking uh, to the point of offensive. Uh, but the one thing they get, someone's going to notice when they drive under that is that headline. I went to a climate change summit, advertising summit meeting about oh, almost 20 years ago now. And a whole lot of agencies had an hour to write an ad around climate change. And a brilliant agency called the Glue Society here in Australia wrote, don't rape your mother. Um, and I think for COP, it's not just around you taking action, but letting the world, uh, making sure that the world takes action too. So when, if you're going to go shock, uh, push it, push, 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 push. It's always easier to pull people back and pull yourself back from extremes than to push further into the extreme. So if you feel comfortable doing it, go there. Another way in, which is the more emotional way, uh, what are you going to tell your grandkids about this week? Because they're going to have to tell their grandkids something. What did they do at COP26 when they talked to their grandkids in 2042? Um so again, trying to be a little bit more upfront and emotional. Like you have to answer to your own family first and your own grandkids first. And so really sort of tapping into those emotions. So there are a couple of ways in there. Um, and so really interesting exercise. And I know like 10 minutes isn't much, really. Um, so you know, I, I appreciate you having a go, but as I said, it's 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 a muscle. If, if you can carve out, and you're going to be busy, you're going to have 5, 10, 20 briefs on at any given point in time, but you need to be able to carve out the time to be able to do it. Um, and if it's 10 minutes per brief and you just keep rolling back, however you manage your time, you just got to keep writing and writing and writing and writing. And when you, and a lot of the headlines I've been seeing, they're all, they're all technically sound, the ones that you've been sent, in, sent through, but if I'm reading that 
I look at it and you get, effectively you're stating the obvious. Um, you're not giving me any new information. You're not putting a twist on the problem. You are telling me something that I, I probably already know uh, or is a perspective on that problem that is either irrefutable uh, or isn't terribly thought provoking. And as I said, I'll provide more details moving forward and I'll try and I'll pick all the positives about everything you've written as well. But you've got to understand that you're coming at people from nowhere. You're leaping out of the bushes at them. Um, and so if what you're saying is something, isn't something they haven't heard before, or if it is something that they have heard before, rather than the double negative, if it's something that they've heard before, that they're not going to engage. So we need to provide a different perspective. All right, moving on. I'm a little bit conscious of time. Some brands to study because they've become legends through the power of headlines. I picked two brands, and one of them is Oatly. Hopefully you already know about Oatly, but it is an oat milk uh, available in several several countries. They have their own in-house advertising agency. Their competition was cow's milk and to a lesser extent soy. Uh, and their very first insight when they launched was the, the insight that cow's milk is not made for people. It's made for baby cows. Uh, and when you remind people of that, they tend to be quite grossed out and off-put by regular milk. So they launched with this statement. It's like milk but made for humans. And they can't legally call themselves dairy. Um, and this is a brilliant headline around launching their ice cream. We can't legally call this ice cream, but you still can. Because it tastes like ice cream, it feels like ice cream. Um, and the, there was a product insight is that the legal team said you can't call it ice cream. It's like, you know what, we're going to make an ad out of that little nugget of information. Brilliant, brilliant piece of copywriting. Read a little bit more about Oatly, and I do recommend you do it because it is a, a brilliant example of how to build a challenger brand in a crowded market. Screen grab this page, input that URL, read the case study. It's very brief, but it's interesting. And not just about copywriting, but marketing and positioning and targeting in general. So Oatly is a really good one. And obviously there's The Economist that uh, I told you about before. Definitely a great one to keep coming back to. Look at the cleverness of what they're doing here. They're not trying to do things this simple is very difficult to do. Um, behind every economist reader, there's someone who isn't. All right, fantastic. In this particular link, there are links to 17 different economist ads, uh, or at least the headlines within those ads uh, that are definitely worth a look and a study about why they work. Uh, so Cole Schaefer has very generously put that together. So two really good case studies around brands built on more than just copywriting, obviously, but have used copywriting as their secret weapon. So that's it for headlines at this stage. Um, hopefully, and as, as I said before, I'll do it through AD, is share this, um, this PDF with you. Um, so you can look at the techniques. I know there were some comments in the chat that we sort of raced a bit, a little bit through the techniques, and that's that. You know, we've only got a certain amount of time, but once you've got a copy of this PDF, you can go back and refer to those techniques and help un unblock yourself as you write headlines. Um, and then obviously the examples are there as well. But I wanted to cover taglines a little bit quicker. Taglines are really interesting. A great fun challenge for a. Uh, creative and they don't come along very often and it is the delicate art of summing up an entire brand in as few words as possible spoiler it's a lot harder than you think it's really really easy to write rubbish taglines uh, and it's very very difficult to write good ones they're a wonderful challenge but then they, they not only sum up your brand promise and your brand positioning but they reveal a little bit of your personality about your brand as well so they're asking a lot and there are two different types of taglines. And these are the slogans. This is the I'm loving it at the end of McDonald's and the just do it at the end of Nike. That's what I'm talking about with taglines here. So one type reveals a genuine point of difference, what genuinely stands that brand out from the competition. And the other tagline, which falls into the majority, is one that talks to a category selling point but does it in a very distinctive and ownable way, which is what just do it did for Nike. So I've got some examples here. One that reveals a genuine point of difference is Aldi. 
Now, I'm not sure if you have Aldi where you are, but uh, in Australia, Aldi, we've got two major supermarket chains and Aldi is the third one. Uh, they're a little bit kooky. They're different. They're cheaper. Uh, and they, they definitely do things differently overall. Um, they save people money and their advertising is quite funny. Um, and they did this tagline, which you read it and you go, uh, it, uh, what kind of, what is it? it it's, it's not a traditional turn of phrase. You know, when someone says something's different, you know, when you taste something, oh, that's different. There's two types. There's, there's bad, different, I don't like that. Or there's, it's, it's good, different. It's, it's different, but good. And so when you say good, different, um, in two words, you're saying we're a different kind of supermarket, but we do it good, we do it better. You know, we're good, different because we're cheaper. We're good, different because our products are that little bit more accessible. Uh, we're good different because of the way our stores are laid out. It's easier to get around. We're good different because we get, you get through the checkouts faster. So that's a really, really distinctive tagline. Uh, but at the same time, reveals a little bit about their personality and it reveals a little bit about their product. Another really good tagline is ta for the state of Tasmania. If you don't know about anything about Tasmania, in Australia, we have, I think it's seven or eight different states uh, and at the bottom of Australia, there's a little island uh, called Tasmania, which is right down towards Antarctica, the South Pole, and it's cold. Um, but it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. And Tasmania is known for uh, spas and relaxation and nature and uh, relieving stress. And it's known as this little haven for, Tas for, for Australians. So instead of saying come up for air, they've taken this well-known phrase and said come down for air, which is a twist on one of the techniques I told you earlier on. So come down for air is a, a wonderful, uh, and, and it's, it's distinctive because you have to come down to get to Tasmania. On the map, it's down. So when you say come down here, it's generally go south if you're in the southern hemisphere. And so Come Down for Air is just a really nice, distinctive tagline that Tasmania have now owned for years and years. And all through this is the credits for the two, for the agencies that have, that have done everything. So it's probably too small for you to read, but I've credited everything throughout. Um, BMF, uh, the uh, agency here, and ironically, BMF, uh, the agency for Tasmania as well, that created this tagline. Um, a really fantastic Australian agency, probably worth looking into. The Aldi stuff in particular is fantastic work. I'd recommend you look it up. Look up Aldi. So then there's the other type, the ones that talk to a category selling point, but do it in a highly distinctive and ownable way. Just do it. Like if Just Do It wasn't taken by Nike, any sportswear company could claim it. Um, but Nike did. And then they've owned it through the whole ethos of their brand. Their brand persona is the hero. They like to empower people to think that they can do anything. If you want to run a marathon, go and do it. Um, just get out there and do it. And so Nike now own that. It's not a distinctive point of, it becomes a distinctive point of difference over time. But when it was first written, it was more around the ethos of a company. Same with impossible as nothing. It's effectively a variation of just do it. For Adidas, if you think about it, um, they kind of both say a very similar thing. And McDonald's is, I'm loving it. Or KFC could have said that, or Subway, or any fast food place. But they came up with it, now they own it. And some of them are really functional. If you look at BMW, it's the ultimate driving machine. So that's just saying that it's a good car. Um, and that's that. So that. You know, through repetition and time, they've owned it, and now they're known as the ultimate driving machine. And so, there's a lot of um, a lot of history behind BMW, and obviously, over time, the, the taglines like this are able to build a lot of equity. Um, but you know, again, it works, but only because it's very repetition repetitious. I think if you came up with that tagline in a in a in an advertising agency in a creative department, and you, why don't we just call ourselves the ultimate driving machine? I think all the creatives would turn around and go, "Nah, it's not imaginative enough. It's not clever enough. 
everyone at BMW would be nodding their heads furiously like a bobblehead going, yes, 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 we are the ultimate driving machine. Of course we are. Yes, of course. Who wouldn't want to be that? Um, so there's that tension between what's cool in the creative department and what's cool in the client world. It's something that you're going to become intimately familiar with over the course of... Okay. Quick question for the crowd. Are these, these are two taglines. Uh, that fall into the second category, which aren't, don't reveal a particular point of difference at that particular company. Uh, any company could own it. But do you think these are good or bad and why or why not? Anyone want to speak up? I think the first one is a good one because it talks about the functionality of the brand. DHL? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, I think the second one, it's finger licking good. It also evokes imagination. Like you start to imagine right away that, okay, you're enjoying your food, even without ordering it or having it or being at a dining place. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Unati, good point in chat. KFC is good because it's the highest praise for a food item when you lick your fingers. Yes, absolutely. So I, I kind of agree. I like the KFC one. I think it's good because it is distinctive. Uh, it, there, it's a distinctive set of words that they can own, whereas DHL, excellence simply delivered, looks like it was written by someone in their marketing department. It lacks imagination and it lacks distinctiveness. Um, and so that is a very, very forgettable tagline, excellence simply delivered, where it's finger licking good is something that you remember because it's different. Very, very simple. And that's the way taglines should be. So how do you write them? You need to know every inch of the organisation you're writing for. Uh, what's their purpose? What's the promise to their customer? What do they stand for? And ultimately, what's their vibe? When you take on clients in either as a freelancer or agency world, it's your job to get under the hood and get really involved in their business. And that means talking to their employees. If they're a store, go and spend some time in their store. If they've got a manufacturing plant, go and look at the manufacturing plant. Talk to their people, talk to their customers, know as much as you can. And from that, you're going to get a really strong vibe for a company um, and what, they, what their purpose is, how they came to be, what's the promise they make to their customer. And for DHL, I'm sure they could have done better than that. I'm sure if someone spent some time talking to the delivery drivers, talking to the customers who receive the DHL goods on time, how do they feel when, when a DHL person turns up at their door? It's exciting, right? And so, and they know that they're going to be there on time. So there's definitely an emotional connection that customers have with DHL that you can really capitalise on. So why not do that like KFC did with Finger Lick and Good? So you really do need to understand the companies that you're dealing with. Um, you got to write ads for them anyway. You have to understand them. It's your job. Let's have a go at one 7-Eleven. Convenience store. They're convenient, local, reliable. They have a good choice of food and items, drinks, whatever, when you're on the move. Plus, they love to have a bit of fun. It is a fun brand, 7-Eleven. Um, and so... Maybe spend a little bit of time on this. We're almost done. So I'll give you five minutes to do this one. Um, and let's put the um, – it's actually going to work easier for me if we put the um, lines up on chat instead of email. I'll email your responses for the two previous exercises. They're a little bit more detailed. But this one, have a bit of fun with it. And push, push the envelope. Put your lines up in chat. And I'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll chat through them five minutes from now. A few minutes later. Sarah for the eleventh hour. I like it. Nice little play on words. Lucinda, my dad's first choice over mum. <laughs> That's what I like. Push it out. Have a. It's, it's very funny. Push it. Push it. Push it. You can always pull it back. Prefu's got your munchies bestie, and it's not necessarily the best line, but what I do like is that it's distinctive. Um, and it's something that you could put up there and over repetition over time, you could own that very nicely and probably feed into some nice creative ideas. 
Um, so that's what I mean about distinctiveness. If you're making quite an obvious statement about we're open 24 hours and we're always here for you kind of thing, that's all the competition could say that. We're looking for something distinctive uh, that they can own moving forward. Life subscripted, 7-Eleven's prepared. Again, interesting. That could, that could actually lead itself into some really nice unscripted advertising campaigns. Like Umesh, nice work. I'm going to shut down chat now because I'm getting a bit distracted by it. We need to keep going. Well done. You're starting to get the hang of it. But as I said, some of those ones like your munchies bestie. As I said, not the best, but it's good because it is distinctive. Distinctiveness is very, very important if you're writing an effective tagline. It's the same when it comes to headlines at the end of the day. If you're saying something that is very easily, uh, can be very easily replicated by your competition, then it's not a good headline. It needs to ladder up to your brand uh, and it needs to be very distinctive. I'm going to leave you with some people to follow if you don't already know who they are. Vicky, you already had a session with her. Uh, the bloke called Dave Harland, he's another UK copywriter. Uh, very, very funny man, but also puts out a, uh, a weekly um, newsletter, which is really interesting around good copywriting. Uh, Shlomo Genshin, I think he's from the US. Uh, he is really, really good at uh, performance copywriting and headline writing. He he shares all sorts of wonderful uh, techniques and tips on LinkedIn. Um, for If you've got a client that's in a very fast-moving kind of business and does a lot of performance marketing, which is stuff that needs to kind of move the dial and, and get sales quickly and things like that, uh, Shlomo is a really good guy to follow. And obviously Dan Nelkin, who's lent a lot of his tips and techniques to the presentation that you've just seen today, is brilliant as well. So look them up on LinkedIn and follow them. I encourage you to do that because you'll get a lot out of that. And these people also share. It's also really I mean, there's, there's people all the time on LinkedIn. So the more people you, that you follow, thought leaders that you follow, they'll occasionally share the people that they follow. Um, so that's really interesting stuff as well. And now I'm kind of open for questions and it don't have to be copywriting or headline questions. They could just be industry specific questions because I've got some very definite points of view around how to. So from Tariq, what's the best way to present the headlines other than written? Uh, the best way? It, it, it's kind of the only real way to do it. Um, when it comes to copywriting and, and, and writing body copy and scripts and things like that, uh, I think the best way certainly to write is to read it out loud yourself, uh, certainly when you're presenting scripts. Um, and when you're, writing, when you're writing body copy, write it first in your head and in your mind, put it down on paper or on your computer or whatever, but then read it. If copy doesn't sound conversational, it sounds too arrogant or unrealistic or inauthentic, rewrite it because good copy should be spoken uh, fairly conversationally, um, unless it's really for a formal product, for example, like a funeral brochure, for example. You don't want it to be too kind of casual. But, um, yeah, I think when it comes to headlines, people are going to read them, whether it's on a mobile phone or on a billboard or on a newspaper or whatever. Uh, they're going to read them. So they have to they, they, they can't require too much explanation. It's sort of like, what do you think of this? Head the, okay, this headline suite is going to be for The Economist around people who think they're pretty smart. Um, and we're going to use popular turns of phrase and we're going to uh, twist them um, to make people feel a little bit clever. Here you go. So maybe presenting what the general gist of your headlines are in one or two sentences and then present. People come at your ads cold. If they require too much explanation up front to the client that you're presenting to, then they're not going to work in the real world. Uh, do you think, Carla, do you think headlines are worth using in everyday social media posts with the quick attention span nowadays or would it be better to find a twisted graphic way? They both work. Um, yeah, I would suggest definitely headlines are worth whatever stops the scroll at the end of the day. Um, you know, to me, what would stop me scrolling is a cat with laser, laser beams shooting out of its eyes. That would stop me. And if it's relevant to the product, then that works. If it's relevant to the market, it would have to be aimed at 
um, people who like animals, um, you know, if, if your cat isn't a wizard, then come to this particular pet store and we'll take care of all of their, their needs. That works with a twisted visual and straight headline. When we were with a funeral company, we had a, our, our target market were baby boomers. They're all people over the age of 60 and 70 and they're all on Facebook. And so the best way to talk to them was through really striking headlines. We were a startup and we had we sold prepaid funerals. Probably a good example. We were a startup and we sold prepaid funerals, which basically means you pay, uh, you pay now and you pay a fraction of the price. And when you die, we will organise a, a cremation and a, s- a simple service for your family. Um, and that when you pass away, that could be ten years, twenty years, thirty years time. And so the number one question we got was, well, what happens when you go out of business? Does all my money just disappear? You take my money. And the question, the answer to that question is no. We invested your money in a in a, a government trust fund, and if we go bust, the you get the money back. But we're trying to tell people that they, 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 they don't care. They have this point that you got this narrow attention span. You got to grab them as you're scrolling through. And so the headline was, "We'll go. We're going out of business." And underneath it said, "When everyone stops dying." And so we will never go out of business because people don't stop dying. And as you're scrolling, this shock headline is we're going out of, funeral companies going out of business when people stop dying. People like, that ad went crazy. People thought it was hilarious. They wanted to engage with the brand. They could see a funeral company had a sense of humour. And so that particular example, headlines work. So I think you have to look at it on a case-by-case, client-by-client basis. Uh, okay, Surat, do you think of visuals after the headline before or together? That's a really good question. Um, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no answer. Um, no one answer to that. It, sometimes it's dedicated. Sometimes it does, does it comes up with the answer for you. For example, you might be selling a black t-shirt, and the ad has to have a picture of the black t-shirt. So straight visual, twisted headline. So you need to start coming up with some twisted headlines So you could, because you've been given the visual. But if it's a blank sheet, like that, that Land Rover ad where the car was, there was the road and then the car was driving off to the side of the road, um, that was a blank sheet and said, okay, what if the, that visual would have come first? It's like, what if we actually drive the car on the, like take it off the road and have it driving all over the rocks on the side of the road? Yeah, cool. Twisted visual. Okay, cool. Straight headline. So You'll generally work with an art director or as a, as a team. Sometimes if you're freelance, you work by yourself, but every brief calls for a different approach. Um, and Kit, how do brands come up with a tagline if they don't have a distinct point of differentiation? Surat, perfect answer. They just try and say it differently. You've got to say it in a distinctive way. That's exactly the point. Um, find a set of words that sum up your brand uh, um, perfectly that are different and have never been heard by people before and then sell it into the business. Is there a checklist prepared for different directions for headlines? I think you'll get that out of um, Dan's book. Um, And there's no, as far as I know, I don't know a checklist, but shocking puns, the human truth, product insights, it's all there, absolutely. Um, But I don't think there's a definitive list there so definitely the book is something that you need to refer to because it's a, it's a wealth of info um but definitely product insight product insight human insight two things i still i still work for mazda so i spent seven years looking after the creative for mazda and so our work would either be out of a every car would have to have a different set of advertising uh, messages and sometimes it would be a product insight. So we had this, which is called the Mazda CX-3. It was a small SUV. Um, and the insight was in the small SUV category, the cars are really, really ugly. They're just ugly. They're not going to age well. They look good now because they followed t- today's design trends. But in five years, 10 years, 20, t- 20 years time, when that car is old, it's going to look terrible. It's going to be an embarrassment on the road. Whereas the CX-3 had a beautiful design. Like it was, it was easily the best looking um, small SUV. It was quite timeless. Uh, it's going to look good in 20 years. 
And so we came, it was a product insight. So we came up with the, ta with the tagline, a modern classic. And so that car became a modern classic. We put it, we put that car in a 1950s environment and it was driving around all these 1950s cars and it was all very film noir and it was gorgeous and that was the campaign. Mazda 6, totally different car. It's a big sedan and it's driven by businessmen and businesswomen. Um, it's a family car, but it's also driven to work. And so we didn't have much to say about that car. It was nice. Um, but we came up with a human insight is when you're a parent and you've got grown, kids in, who are teenagers who are, the, who are our Mazda 6 drivers, if you've got kids who are teenagers and you've got a really busy job because you're a senior executive, you've got no alone time. Like that's your life is your work and your family and that's it. Um, so we decided that we would, the tagline for that was this is quality time. And so we saw the time in your car where you drive to and from work is your alone time for the day. And how good is alone time? Like the own the commute. Yeah. Um, so it was all around turning off, switching off, enjoying a beautiful car, enjoying a beautiful drive this car represents your alone time and so creating that positive association so so different ways different ways in um okay i think that's kind of it for the questions thank you so much mr dom for taking the time to teach us all about headlines and taglines we've definitely learned a lot about the elements and specifics of headlines as well as the rules the techniques for keeping words flowing the examples and exercises greatly help our understanding and thank you for making this so interactive. We are extremely grateful and we look forward to seeing more of your amazing work in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I wish you all nothing but the best of luck. It is an incredible career uh, and what a wonderful job. Um, I'm so thankful that I'm a writer and I hope you all become great writers.